Cooper Temple Claws. Who needs enemies? Good question, lads. Nobody. <laughs> Six <laughs> FM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Oh, they should print a little book of those. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. <laughs> oh, how you can relate any song or artist <laughs> to anything else. Easy. Joyful. Easy. Well, yeah, so, uh, m me and, uh, me and Carl went out, uh, for a beer and it was, uh, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, enjoy Start, yourself. We started yeah, off good. and you met my mate Robbie, didn't you? Yeah. And, uh, um, some of the stories. Do you want to tell Steve some things about Robin? That Robin. You know? Do you know him well? Yes. Well, um, do you know about his, his worm problem as a kid? Go on. Right. He, uh, what I can remember is he, he had worms as a kid. Not sure how he get them, he never answered me, he was getting a bit touchy about it. Right. But I, I, this is like the second time I met him. I think he was a bit annoyed that Ricky told me about his problem. What, yes. now, what, uh, now straight away, you not being there, instinctively, what do you think went on with this story about worms? My suspicion yeah. is rather like when you told a group of people that Robin had once suckled milk from a cow's udder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I told I, you yeah. Did you mention that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my suspicion is that, uh, like the cow story, the worm story is not true. But and why, Robin... why would he get so sort of uppity about it? Well, imagine because if, it's not true. imagine if he, it, that wasn't the first time he'd done it. Imagine if he did that every single time <laughs> he was with somebody for the first time and Robin was, uh, just met them. He tells that, he will tell that story to anyone. But they do say there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> I also told him- That's a fable. I also- I, I also told him that the way Robin cured these worms- yep. Was because the doctor told his mother, right, to hold a piece of ham or cheese near Robin's anus so the worms would come out for the food and he believed it. I I'll said tell to, you why though. I said to Robin used to sit on spam to try and get the worms out and he believed it. Well Steve, right, do you remember that story about th ooh, three or four years ago where there was some bloke in the army he went away to somewhere, Vietnam or whatever. He was messing about in the woods. Um Messing <laughs> about in the woods? Shouldn't he have been fighting? Whatever. Yeah. Right, and he, he walked through some lake and I think he'd cut his toe or something on, on something and some worm of some sort crawled in the in the gash. Yeah. And um it, it was in his body and the doctor said, we've got to get this out of your body. So what they did was, they said, right, the, the thinnest part or something of your body that things can crawl through is on the top of your head. So they wrap some Where the skull is. So they wrap some bacon. <laughs> no, they didn't! They did. Because that's oh, right. Everyone... So he's going by the toe. Uh, so what we do is, I'll tell you what, that worm's probably heading straight for the head. We put a bit of bacon on it. The thinnest part of the body is the, the, the skull. Of course it's not the thinnest part of the body. It's the, where your brain case is, isn't it? It's the hard- the skull. There was- there was a reason for it. And it was like they, they, um, stuck some bacon on his head. And <laughs> As ever, the vital piece of information, uh, <laughs> i.e. the reason, Carl seems to have forgotten. <laughs> it, because the worm was in, in his body and they said every, you know, everyone likes to smell of bacon. <laughs> Including even worms. Worm. Even, a, even a Vietnamese lake worm. They, <laughs> they, 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 oh, they remember love Remember last week, remember last week when I said about the little fella with the bone with no brain and you were proved wrong? No. Please. No, 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 no. We were saying it wasn't a little fella. We were saying it was a stillborn child. It wasn't no, a little you're fella. You're changing it now. You weren't having any of it last right, week. Right, hang on a minute. Let's just, I'm getting confused. There was a Vietnamese... There wasn't a Vietnamese, there was a Vietnamese snake that went inside of no, a soldier. Worm. A little like maggot or some sort <laughs> that you have to get out of your body because it causes problems. Yes. <laughs> and so in order <laughs> to get it out of the body, they strapped bacon to his head. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. This doctor. And did that work? I think so. They had a picture of him smiling. <laughs> Oh, God, what, the worm or the bloke? The bloke. Oh, dear. Honest, honestly, I, I hope someone knows a story. Um, right. Just, it was about three years ago, I reckon. Okay. And, um, yeah, it did work. G.I. So, G.I. Bacon. So this is why <laughs> I, I, when, and so when- what, the, wor the worm burrowed out of his head to get the bacon? Get to the bacon. Right. <laughs> Um <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So I this is it. this is why when Robin was telling his story, I, I was a little bit disappointed if it wasn't true. Cause, right. Because in a way, you know, Robin's never been to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I, I would do you really think that Robin, well, as Robin said at the time, Carl, why would I sit on ham then tell Ricky Gervais? <laughs> it's a very good point. Because if he was a kid, you do you do have things like that as a kid. <laughs> right. He is the telling Ricky Gervais though. Yeah. And then, yeah. oh, bless him. Okay. And, and then anyway, then, uh, Robin left and, uh, I tried to chase him but he got away and he <laughs> knows that we, uh, yeah. Um, and then we had a few pints and then, uh, 
Carl embarked on some of the greatest stories ever told. Have you- can you tell the story about your dad? Let me run it by- I haven't spoke to him all week, so let me run it by him. Okay, play record. Cause, uh, you know. What we got? We've got, uh, one of Steve's- Yeah, teams. well, bizarrely enough, this comes from the, uh, Teachers 2 soundtrack, oh. the soundtrack to the, uh, the current TV series. There's a slight whiff of nepotism in the air. Yeah. Rick, would you like to explain why? Well, that's why you're doing it, though my girlfriend, uh, worked on it. But, yeah. um, you were gonna play this anyway, weren't you? Well, I was, actually. Bizarrely enough, I was gonna play some I Am Clute, and, uh, this is from, as I say, the, uh, the Teachers soundtrack, and this is called To You. It's a good track- oh. track called To You from the, uh, Teachers soundtrack that's also got, uh, I noticed the Electric Soft Parade, the Hives, Star Sailor, Feeder, uh, Turing Break, Smoky Rev on there. It's a good little collection. Lovely. Carl, uh, has just had confirmation. He's looking smug because someone phoned up and went, it is true, it's a Lao Gai Chi worm and you wrap bacon around your head. That's all the bloke knew as well. Yeah. And his name was Gary. Yeah. So I'm not having it. No. And he said, he said, see, that's why the Robin thing isn't so weird. He said, but when you said he tried it with cheese, he said I was having none of it. <laughs> Strokes, hard to explain. Like Carl, really? Yes, yes. So, Carl, concentrate. Here go on. So, we'll, um, we'll, we'll leave the worm with the bacon wrapped around the head, shall we? Well, if you're ever caught in the jungle. Yeah, always carry some. Bit of Danish. <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> Lovely. So, would you like to start on your. Uh, to Steve, because I've heard all these. Um, uh, well, we won't do them all. Well, um, well, st we'll start off with the, uh, the Mr. Freeze. Tell Steve the story of Mr. Freeze. This is the first time he nearly died. This, this is the most serious of the lot, really. So, um, what it was, do you know, like, um, I don't know if your mum and dad did the same thing, but, like, they do the weekly shopping on, on, like, a Friday. Yeah. So when, when you got to Thursday, <coughs> there wouldn't be much stuff left in the cupboard. It'd just be like, you know, your Jacob's crackers and stuff mm. like that. So when they'd, when they'd been to the supermarket and they came back, I was like, uh, you know, what's that saying? Like a pig in. You know, I, I loved it. It was like loads of food coming in, loads of biscuits. He nearly said, what is that saying? He nearly said pig in shit. <laughs> right. Is that the saying? <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, so yeah, all this food comes in. Thank God like... he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's in a bit in trouble. That's true enough. Because he's, he's culpable for our actions because exactly. he's the producer. So technically, oh. that twat's in charge. Go yep. on. Right. So anyway, so there's loads of food and I'm like, oh yeah, look at this one. Chocolate biscuits and, uh, you know, penguins and stuff. Bacon. So, and bacon. <laughs> Just in case, you never know. So, um, so, anyway, my mum and dad's putting the food away. Me and our kid are like, he's already grabbed something, gone back upstairs. <laughs> it's like feral children. <laughs> it's, it's like a quest for fire. <gasps> and then they run upstairs. <laughs> it was, what did you sit under the bed, gnawing at some sort of pig's trotter? So, so I saw, um, do you remember Mr. Freeze Pops? I do, yes. Yeah, so well, they're kind of like popsicles, icicles. Yeah, they? but really long, like yeah, a foot yeah, long, yeah. right? Yeah. So I thought, I'll have one of them, so I grabbed it. Went for the nutritious stuff first. Absolutely. And, uh, and like my mum and dad are putting this stuff away and what have you. And I, I rip it open and knock it back. Right, straight away, just right back like Swallow that. Right down it. Down but it, it went down the wrong way, right? So <laughs> what, I was down like, your shirt? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like, oh god, I can't breathe. And my mum and dad didn't, uh, didn't even know what I'd ate. Do you know what I mean? It went, it, I ate it so f f so quick. Yeah. And uh, I'm sort of tapping my mum on the back, going, uh, uh, she's going, oh god, you know, he's, he's choking again because I was always choking. <laughs> if it was one thing, I don't know if I've got like a small throat, but, <laughs> but I mean, even Ricky knows I can't drink that much, can I? Yeah. Do you know, or I'm eat not pebbles. A, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a, f a quick drink drinker. I'd always, um, I think I'm scared of like swallowing stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was like bottle tops and mint imperials and stuff. I was always, I was always choking on stuff. Jeez. <laughs> oh, so, so anyway, she's going, oh god, what's he picked up on it now? <laughs> Drop it! Drop it! So, hit, his, hit his nose with a stick! So I was going, oh, I'm choking. At this point, my, my dad had like, I think he'd put his, his share away, you know, his food away and he'd gone his to- His share! I yeah. love it! Yeah. He'd, he'd gone to watch like, winner takes all or whatever, <laughs> in a lounge. And I, I was in the kitchen and I was starting to like, just, I didn't care anymore, do you know what I mean? I hadn't, I, I just got to that point where I wasn't struggling anymore. You just thought I'm done I just for. was like falling to the ground. And my mum's going, you know, get in here, I think it's serious. And uh, my dad comes in and sort of starts shouting at me saying that's what you get for being greedy. <laughs> he didn't even know what I'd eaten. Well, it was, it was the moment to teach you a lesson, certainly. <laughs> so he's there like that and my mum's going, oh, look at him. And my lips were going purple and my eyes were rolling into the back of my head. You look like Marilyn Manson. And, uh, so anyway, she grabbed me from behind and did that, that fireman thing. The Heimlich manoeuvre. Yeah. And, uh, you know, winded me. And it came up, and I was all right. What the whole right. popsicle came flying back out? I don't, I don't, you see, that's what I don't understand. 
because no, there was just nothing it, there. No, I just a little bit. No, it swells up, doesn't it? Because it irritated it. So it went down your, your sort of like your epiglottis. It went down the wrong way. Like it went into your air canal instead of your so throat. And it, it sort of it it sort of spasms, and that's the that's the fear. You just got to calm it down and relax. So but in time, I would have been alright. Yeah, anyway. you don't. Um, well, no, yeah. you might have. So that's so so so, so, so that's hang on. one. So, but, but, so no, no, no. But the weird thing is, like for like three days after that, I felt like a sort of a special person. <laughs> I was I went to school. Oh, I, did, that? I'm I, saying nothing. I, I did full <laughs> days. <laughs> <laughs> a special needs person. <laughs> Yeah. I went. I went to school the next three days. After that, I didn't like wag it or anything. I did full days. I love that. Three days. Turn over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. After three days, you thought screw it. Yeah. Well, did, did a quick history yeah. exam. Yeah. But yeah. have you ever had that where you've like felt like I've been given another chance here? Mm. Right. Next that one. Weird. That's popsicle. That's popsicle hell. We call cool that. Right. Next one. Uh, which one's the next one? Oh, what about your paper round? Right. Can I ask very quickly? Did your life flash before your eyes, like they say it did? No, I just sort of, sort of went really calm and like, I'm ready for this now. Right. I wasn't bothered, do you know what I mean? I you had no scared. regrets? No. No. Um, it was weird. It was really weird. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the paper round one. Uh, paper round, I'd still say it's the best job I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> and he means it! No, I really oh. enjoyed it. It's like, you oh. know, <laughs> you, you, you don't have to work with anyone else, right? Oh. So you make your own rules. <laughs> just think of that. Um, yep. you know, um, you sort of You're around. spreading information well, yeah, to people. Yeah, vital information. Giving a service. Yeah. And no one else is around, you know, you can just do what you want and think about stuff whilst you're cycling around on your bike. It's really good. Yeah. So, um, so anyway. Imagine the stuff he's thinking about when he's <laughs> riding around. <laughs> no, I can't. Oh, so, <laughs> I'm getting in the head of a salamander. <laughs> so I anyway, I, I loved it. And even though I only got like 50p a day, right, no matter what the weather was like and stuff, I used to get up at half past four. And uh, go and do the round. And um, why did you get a bar pass for? Because I wanted to watch the Pink Panther at five thirty. So <laughs> I wanted to get me paper round done. I said, why didn't you watch the Pink Panther? And then, and then, then he went, oh, I can't sit there thinking I've got my paper round to do. <laughs> He'll ruin it for him. Yeah. So is it a good job or not? Go so four four thirty, I was up up and about. And this morning it was like winter, a really bad winter, bad snow. You know, freezing cold, really windy and all that. And my mum said to me before I went to bed, she said, don't be getting up tomorrow. I'll give you the 50p. I said, it's not about the 50p. <laughs> so, you know, people want the papers and stuff. <laughs> so, um... Conscientious. <laughs> so anyway, I went to bed thinking, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm, I've told her I'm still going, so, you know, whatever. Go to sleep, get up in the morning and, uh, put all my kit on. And I, I used to have layers of clothing on because it was really cold. They had, like, a big anorak on with the fur on. They had, like, waterproof pants. And I got my paper round bag. And, uh, I went downstairs to get out and tried to open the door and it was locked. I thought, oh, God. So, uh, uh, so she'd locked it so I couldn't go out. So I'm searching around the house looking for the keys. She must have hid them somewhere. I thought, oh, God, you know, I've, I've got the papers to do. So I thought, how can I get out? So I went upstairs, climbed out of the bathroom window. God. Right, and to try and jump out of the bed bathroom window onto the porch. But the problem was, I had so much gear on, I was like the Michelin man. <laughs> so I could hardly, I could hardly move as it is. Yeah. And I'm trying to get out the window, and I'd, I'd, I'm like, trying to stretch down like that, get me foot on the, on the porch. And my bag got caught on like the hook of, do you know like how you have a hook so you can put the window open? Right, yeah, the yeah, little yeah, arm goes yeah. on. My bag had got caught on that. I was holding onto the, like, the, the wall and my foot on the thing so I couldn't sort of pull it, pull it away in case I pulled it away and then fell on my head. Yeah. So I'm stuck there. Dangling. Dangling. My dad comes back from working nights. Yeah. He thinks I'm a burglar. <laughs> Gets out his gun. So, he, <laughs> so he's shouting and stuff, going mad and going, Dad, it's me. And he had to give us a hand using a- <laughs> He's heard that wily trick in Manchester before. <laughs> <laughs> he had to help me using a washing prop thing. A big stick. What did he do? Well, he said, just hold on for your dear life and I I'll sort of push the paper bag off the hook. Why and didn't he go upstairs and sort it out? It was at that point where I was in the middle, there was nothing you could do, do you know what I mean? Mm, it's at that point where you've just got to make a decision. Yeah. And by the time you go upstairs, who knows what might have happened. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You've got to act there and then, don't <laughs> listen around. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so- And you could hear downstairs, now here he is, the Pink Panther. <laughs> yeah. Dad! Pink Panther. Hurry up! Panther. Ever so pink! <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that, that was close to death, because I must have been about 30 foot in the air. Yeah. And I would have, you know, that would have been nasty if I fell. Fell to the concrete pavement. So well, and, uh, there's more. There's more to come. Should we play a record and mm. come back to this? Because he's got more. Oh yeah, no. no, no. no there there must be no, one no, of them no. where you did fall on your head. This is the one I'm waiting for. 
There's gotta be one. That was explained so much. Yeah. I nearly did. Nearly brought me back. Jeez. Once. My dad said I better can't kick me out. And I said I better can. And, uh, I, <laughs> I don't remember this. You didn't tell me this one. You, you no, I better can what? I was in the garden, summer's day, and uh, it was that era when, like, doing kung fu and all that was really popular. Sure. And I was, like, messing about in the garden, punching the tree and, and stuff. <laughs> and my dad said- <laughs> What a kid he must have been! <laughs> my dad said, I bet you can't kick your height. Kick uh, your height? What, yeah, you mean yeah. kick as high as yourself? Yeah. yeah, so I must have been, like, five foot or something yeah. then. And, uh, I said, of course I can. So I bet you can't. But instead of doing it on the grass, I did it on, like, the, the concrete bit. <laughs> Kicked it. Actually did it. I went, there you go! But then, like, Get me foot down quick enough and land oh, on you, the back. Oh, you pause to, pause to say there, I've done it. Yeah. As opposed to putting your foot back on the ground. And, uh, landed on my back and, uh, I, I'd still get back trouble now. Do you? Because you say that, don't you? So, he's, uh, I'll just cut a long story short. He gave me about four or five near-death experiences and he went, and the whole point of this, he went, so that's why I think I'm gonna die of something horrible, like cancer. And I went, why? He went, right, you ready for this? Yeah. He said, well, I don't check my balls. <laughs> Right? <laughs> he said, I don't like the feel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carl, always check your balls. Do you I check don't yours? Like the feel. Why don't you like the feel of your own balls? They just, I mean, you know that I don't like bodies anyway. Right. Do you know what I mean? It worries me a bit that you've got all that going on in your body, right, and your skin's keeping it all in place. <laughs> right. <laughs> Stop, 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 stop. We're going down a whole other avenue of discussion. Let's play a track, let's come back to it. Oh, right, I've brought in this, uh, this is, uh, free, um, you know, uh, you'll know from the Jeans commercials. Yeah, all right now. Long time ago, yeah. all right now, yeah. But this is a great little track. This is, uh, My Brother Jack. <laughs> Stereophonics, Vegas two times, XFM 104.9, into the last hour. Yeah. And then three shows to go. That's true enough. Until we're off the air. I'm Ricky Gervais. <laughs> With him, Steve Merchant. Carl. Oh, yeah. Alright? Yeah. Let's go on and tell you, um, you, we, we cut short last week, weren't we? You, you had a, you had an amazing story about Neil Armstrong, didn't you? Well, we've been doing quotes, haven't we? Like, famous quotes. Sure. Yes. I've, you know, gone down in history. Yeah. And, um, I was saying, you know, quotes don't really matter. Um, <laughs> it's, it's more the situation that you're in than, than the quote itself. Go so, on. like, Neil Armstrong, yeah. if he'd have said, what? Um, I, you know. Tie bacon round your head. I'm as happy as a pig in dust. Yeah, that would have yeah. still gone down in history as like being the thing that Neil Armstrong said, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But. Space is driven but, in mental, probably. But, but, been, yeah. but, but, but he chose to say something <laughs> profound and yeah. meaningful, uh, to uh, befit the situation. It's, well, he got it wrong, actually. It's, uh, uh, a small, small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, but he was meant to say... Yeah, we discussed this last week, one, yeah, it's not yeah. showing off. Well, no, but people might have listened last week. Yeah, it doesn't I mean, matter. I can't imagine well, people we better not, tell them every week, then. Yeah, but uh, he said, uh, he should have said, this is one, uh, small step for a man. Yeah. But anyway, he had a good effort, and that's quite... And, and that's, that's an example of, and, of what I'm saying. The fact yeah. that he got it wrong, but it still went down in history. Right. But anyway, the bit that, uh, and it didn't happen anyway, did it? What do you mean it didn't happen anyway? That's what a lot of people say. That no one's actually been on the moon. Ah, yes, of course. They, they filmed it in Teddington Studios. Well, they were saying something about there was shadow on the film and you wouldn't get shadow on the film. And uh, there's, uh, there's all sorts of things. You know, these people that you always quote as they. <laughs> Who are they? Are, are they living in jars? Are they little fellas in jars? Look. Go on. You know, do they appear to you in dreams? I've spoken <laughs> to different people about it, and there's loads of little things that if you watch that program, they that you know of of them being on the moon, there is no way they could have done it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> done. Yeah. Done. Anyway. That's put to bed. Yeah. But Good. anyway, as he was getting back in the spaceship on the moon, or whether it be a TV studio, yeah. he said, uh, "Good luck, Mr. Croucher." Right. Have you heard this? No. And the reason he said that was because when he was a young kid, and he was pl I think it was Croucher, but when he was playing as a young kid in, in his garden, he was playing baseball with his mate, <laughs> and he chucked the ball to his mate, and his mate hit the ball, and the ball went over the fence to the next door neighbour, right? So he goes, right, I'll just nip over and get the ball. And as he was getting the ball, the window was open to his neighbour's house, and he heard, like, the woman shouting at her husband, saying, I'm not going to be giving you, uh, a bit rude, so if you've got a kid in the car or whatever, turn it down. What, what, yeah, that's covered that, yeah. Right, um. Genius. I'm not, I'm not, um, no matter how many times you ask me, I'm not going to be giving you oral sex. <coughs> the day I do that, man would have walked on the moon. 
Right. right. Yeah. He grows up, he gets on the moon, and he remembers all that story, and as he gets back in the spaceship he says, good luck Mr. Croucher. <laughs> now do you know, now we'll have to say, I've heard that story before, but when I heard it, the woman said, the, 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 the day I give you a blowjob is the day the boy next door walks on the moon. Which makes it all the more profane Impossible. and enjoyable. Yeah, and unlikely. Yeah. But yeah, no, I've heard, I've heard the same story, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> Look how pleased he is. I love that. Right, so not only have you remembered that anecdote, which may or may not be true, but of course you've also proven the that, uh, I'll give you a never even... That kid in the garden's probably gonna walk on the moon and say something about <laughs> giant leaps. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, he yeah. must have heard the thing that it never actually happened. Yes, we've all heard yeah. it. We've all dismissed it as nonsense. <laughs> and moved on. Yeah. Yeah. And got on with our lives. Right, Carl. What? Should we do uh, White Van Man? Well, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't prepare me for that. We better play a track and then I'll uh, okay. out, I'll fish out the newspaper and stuff. Oh, oh this is uh, oh, this is a good little um, a little bootleg track here from um, uh, Meats and Poultry. Here they've um, mixed um, um, A with uh, Outcast. Right. Of course, it's great. Is it highly illegal? It is. So people shouldn't rush to their tape machines now and press okay, play. Okay. So whatever you do, don't don't record this now if you're recording. Hold on. Don't say anything. All well, that bootleg's going into the name of. Uh, um, nothing, Miss Jackson, I think, by, uh, Meats and Poultry. So there you go. I do love these bootleg things, because they're so pointless, but they're so enjoyable. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's fun to do. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, they're they're, really they're, good they're fun. great. But, um, not as much fun as White Van Carl. White Van Carl, absolutely. Um, do you want to explain the premise? Well, um, we take some uh, the son asked someone else and asked Carl. It's as simple as that. That's the right. son of just taken a normal person, we flipped it. <laughs> We're gonna ask Carl the same questions about the week's news. Yeah, just basically your opinions, Carl, as ever. Um, what do you make of, well, obviously the big news, David Beckham's broken foot. Is this a uh, big concern for you? No, I mean, it's sad, you know, um, it's, sad, it's sadder for him more than anyone, cause you know, to, to like, be in the World Cup is like the main thing for him, isn't it? Yeah. But he's still a young lad, and, uh, I don't think he'll give up, I reckon he'll still turn up, uh, he'll be alright, and, uh, yeah, good luck to the lad. You know I like David, I'm not gonna slag him off. <laughs> what <laughs> <is> <laughs> <words>? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He says that like he knows him. <laughs> like he's popping round for drinks later. <laughs> yeah, like we tried to stitch you up. Go but, on. But, um, obviously yesterday, was it yesterday I think, maybe th maybe Thursday, uh, the Sun printed a big picture of, uh, David's, uh, foot mm -hmm. and encouraged everyone to touch it at midday, because hoping that this would somehow, um, if we all thought and prayed together, somehow that would help his foot heal. Do you, do you believe in that? No. Have you any belief in that? No, you're going down the old, like, you're a gallery, aren't yeah, you? Sure. I know, it's, it's stupid. Yeah. I'm sure, I mean, it's nice effort and everything, it sort of cheers everyone up. Hold on, <clears throat> you believe in ghosts and warlocks yeah. and uh, licking toads. How, uh, wh why, why is that any more stupid and all those things? It just, it, it's not gonna work, is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Fine. It's rubbish. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, what about this then? There's, uh, apparently now available 1.5 million pound apartments available on an exclusive ship which sails around the world. Yeah, it's like, uh... What do you make of that? It's a huge thing, and you just, you, you live on it, and it's, I mean, in theory... How big, how big is it? It's, um, it's mental. Do you it's know like a town, town in the centre. Do you know how, like, people said that the Titanic was the biggest ship? Was that only then? They've got yes. bigger ones now, haven't they? Yeah. A lot bigger. Oil tankers are much bigger, and... Yeah. No, but actual line is a big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was the biggest then, yeah. Because my mum told me that there was one that that was that was that big that it had like rough areas on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 God! <laughs> oh. Don't go starboard. Oh God! No, but do you know That's what I mean. Right. It was like we're, a, we're thinking of moving. We're seeing yeah. the captain. We're thinking of moving to a nicer <laughs> area. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've heard they're very rough in aft. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's They fantastic. steal your tires. That how? ship's so big that was rough areas. Oh. How, how big is this one that, that you're talking about? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. It doesn't give me the spe specifications here, but they're, they're huge. huge. They're huge. Um, in theory, I mean, it's, it's that thing with, um, uh, it's obviously marketing, but, um, they're gonna, um, uh, solve, uh, the, uh, um, overpopulation crisis where soon we'll all be just be floating around the sea, yeah, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see that, cause I mean, think about it, right, I've been talking to Ricky about it, I was hoping to buy somewhere in London, but there is no way in this world that I can afford it, right? Um, and you look at all the, all the wasted space, like, with the Thames, all it's doing is, like, collecting crisp packets and stuff, and yeah. coke cans, and people have to clean it up, whereas if you think, if you got a load of boats on there, yeah. problem Perfect. solved. Yeah. Would you live on a boat? solved. Uh, what's his name did it, didn't he? Uh, what's that program? Is it Bergeron? Noah. 
<laughs> Bergerac? There was one where, where he lived on a boat. I think it's quite- was That it was uh, shoestring. I, I'd give it a go anyway. <laughs> no, uh, I'd well, like to see you, um, living in, in the air, maybe in a giant hot air balloon. Yeah, alright. But, um, no, the boat thing, um, cause it, it, it is gonna get bad as well, isn't it? They're saying that the water's melting or whatever. The water's melting, the, yeah. The ice is melting. Yeah. And, and it's gonna be more life. water and less land, so yeah. in the future it's probably gonna be the way we're gonna be living, isn't it? Have you seen that film Waterworld? Nah, I don't fancy it. Because yeah, that, that, that sort of predicts that, yeah. What, are they saying that the ice thing exactly. is melting? Exactly, yeah. But at the same time, um, I was thinking about this a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> if you get, I mean, I think I read that like, a big chunk of ice, uh, fell off one of the ice, uh, what do you call them? Caps. Ice caps. Something like, the, I think they said it's the size of the Empire State Building or something. Right. It, it snapped off and went into the water and it's melted. And they said, oh, it's bad news, you know, that, that, that something that size is melting. But the way I look at it, if something that size falls into the water, it's like a big ice cube and it's gonna freeze it up again. Do you, are you with me? Not no. really, Carl. Go on. Right, you get a giant ice cube, yeah. the size of the Empire State Building, yeah. stick it in the water, yeah. it's gonna make, uh, that, it's gonna stick back on again, isn't it? Well, it no, uh, only on if again. it freezes up again. Yeah, well, it will freeze this? up, the water's well, gonna get cold again, cause you've just put a giant ice cube in the water. Well, so when you put, <laughs> when you put an ice cube in a drink, the drink doesn't freeze, does it? No, the ice it's not. If you put one the size of an Empire State Building in your glass of Jack Daniels, it's gonna make it freezing. <laughs> It's not going in a glass of Jack Daniels, it's going in the ocean. I know, but I'm, that, you see, I'm using my fables. Imagine the world. <laughs> Use your brain instead! Imagine the world, imagine the sea, yeah. like the Arctic or whatever, as yeah. a glass of Jack Daniels. Okay. A big ice cube falls into it. Yeah. It freezes, it melts back on again. So it's, we're all right, I don't know why everyone's <laughs> worrying. Please, <laughs> God, thank God for that, I was getting panicked. Oh, fine. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, that will happen. <laughs> Should we play some more music and then come back to watch yeah, that Yeah, this, this, this is better this, than ever. This is this dynamite, this week. Hi, <laughs> 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 Ninja, on XFM 104.9, we're doing White Van Carl. Got another one there? Uh, well, it's just uh, another, your thoughts really on uh, the Queen Mum's uh, very British send-off that she was given this week. Yeah. What do you make of all those people queuing up to see her? Did you think that was incredible? Right. Well, what we said last week, you know, there was a, I, I don't quite understand why there was so many people there, um, who were, like, getting really upset, do you know what I mean, really upset, crying and stuff, and, you know, you can lose someone who's, r like, related to you, and you don't, you don't cry like that, you sort of sit there and you think back to what you did with them and stuff, and, and then that's it. But, um, <laughs> the queue thing, it was, wasn't it, like, miles long and stuff? Yeah, it was, yeah. Right, I was sat watching this, we see- Twelve hours there. queuing. Yeah. It never got to and 12 hours. It did, but it that did. was the estimated time. No, but how you know. long is a queue when they're just like, you know, walking along? Think how far you can sort of like, st you know, stagger in 12 hours. Incredible. It's been ridiculous. God. Yeah. But, again, you know, if they want to do that, it's their time and that, isn't it? And it's, yeah. It was at the weekend, so they, they could have, it's not as if they got out of work to do it. No. You know, I mean, they use their own time, so good on them. But I thought, right, what they could have done, remember when I studied Che Guevara? Yep. Yeah. Right? Um. And don't be offended by this, it was just an idea, because they did it with Che Guevara. Remember when they cut him up? Yes, Remember? they they cut him up, yeah. What was the reason for cutting him up? Uh, well they cut up Che in order to try and, um, wouldn't they, you, you, you told us that they were gonna send bits of his body to Fidel Castro and trace other people, wasn't that right? Uh, uh, as, as a warning, wasn't it though, to all the, the people like one to... Yeah, uh, my, my understanding was that they cut him up in order to, um, so they could bury him in different places so that there'd be one no shrine, there'd be, not, what, not one place that you could go to in order right. to, well, to a make him like into a martyr. That, a little bit like that, I've like I six can vaguely see where this is going. Six cues, and it's like, number one, you can, you know, go and pay respect to her head, or whatever. Oh, God. No, but think, I just was thinking the way of, of speeding it up. I'm not having a go, I'm not, because they haven't done it, so it doesn't matter. God. But they did it with Che Guevara. Yeah. Everybody would have felt like they've got close to her. Oh, and God. it would have speeded it up. No, I mean, but I can understand. Can I just say that genuinely, Carl is not being disrespectful here. This is his best idea to, to cut down the queues. So don't phone in, he's not suggesting we should have done this, he genuinely well, he is. is. It's, well, but I mean, he's not doing it to be nasty or wacky or, or, you know, he thinks this is a good idea, so. Can just I just throw a thought at Che Guevara, who was like a, a powerful man who did a lot for the world and what yeah. have you. Yeah, yeah. And have you, are you aware that I, I feel slightly responsible for this because have you heard of the quote, um, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing? Yeah. 
Okay. Steve, next one. No, just, just, just a very quick question. I can understand those that have queued for 12 hours to see the head. <laughs> I'd be a little bit annoyed if I got there to find a toe. I'll tell you what, though. I'll tell you what they could do without chopping her up. They could put about nine queues, each could see each hip she had. That's <laughs> true enough. Cause she's, she'd have about nine of them. Yeah. So it'd just be, uh, the, if you want to see the whole body, it's twelve hour queue. If you just want to see a couple of the hips. Here's another suggestion for you, I just <laughs> thought, right? <laughs> but instead of everyone queuing to see her, why not put her on a trolley <laughs> <laughs> and wheel her past everyone else? Running. So yeah, yeah, you could have you could have some students on Rag Week and they can combine it. <laughs> like when they're always pushing a bed. Yeah. You know, they could just run it along the oh. queue. No, that'd, that'd be, be fantastic. That'd, that'd be disrespectful. <laughs> right, as opposed to the chopping up. So sure. Right. But just just an idea. Just I apologize now. Anyone yeah, yeah. offended? Anyone offended, I'm sorry, but yeah. okay, finally, um this is more frothy. Liz Hurley lying low apparently at Elton John's house to try and avoid the press now that she's had a child. That's a good place to go to avoid the press. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Elton John's house. Yeah. Everyone seems to be friends with Elton. And John, yeah, every they, celebrity they, they pop into Elton John's house? What is he running some sort? But of it was like when Robbie Williams was a drunkard and a drug addict. He went to Elton John's. Yeah, yeah and who's the other fellow that went there as well? What's someone to you know to recuperate and uh, quite to shoulder the crime? So is, he, is he giving out false yeah. fa passports? I don't like, know if people have seen his history. He's not the man of you know. I mean, I know he's cleaned himself up now, but you know, and maybe yeah. that's it. Maybe he's got this kind of insight into uh, how to deal with celebrity. Yeah. What well, do you I, think? Well, I think he's just genuine oh. mates with him. I think he's just a friendly bloke. She's been doing too much lying low in the first place. That's part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that, was five, Carl. that was a genuine joke from Carl there. And he's so proud of himself. Look at his little face. Too much lying low. <laughs> Oh, that was no, my man. I agree with you. Why? Why can't she just go around to her mum and dad's or something rather than Elton John, where everyone's looking? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's the point, isn't it? Yeah. So that was good. Yeah. Very good. Oh. Yeah. Right. What music we got? We got uh, bit of flaming lips. Flaming lips. Excellent. There's the, the classic race for the prize. Should have been big hit. Just playing that rip for everyone who emails us. Thing. We get a lot of emails every week, but uh, we obviously don't really respond to them because we're very lazy people. But uh, we obviously appreciate it. And I play that particularly for uh, Claire, who's emailed in saying uh, her friend Sarah Prosser would like some Beatles. We're not going to play the Beatles this week, but. Uh, Sarah apparently loves us more than words can express. More than Carl could express. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm gonna stop you there, people don't want an advert. <laughs> Spread your love on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Mitchell. <laughs> and now it's Carl's bit. It's Carl's, it's the re-education of Carl. He's like Liza Doolittle. And now he's, uh, he's coming to, or oh, Lawnmower Man, if you've seen that film. More like Lawnmower Man, if you've seen the film, you'll know what I mean. Um, uh, and, uh, his homework was to just study quotes, really, on, on happiness and stuff and general well-being. He's not a big happiness, uh, quote fan, are you, Carl? Not really. So what have you done? You've, you've you've come up with something, haven't you? Right, yeah, I told you, right? Because a lot of these are just things you say every day, they're nothing special. Um, so what I'm doing- Well, you say them every day. <laughs> well, the sort of things you come out with and you don't even think about it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, in, they're on the TV all the time, people on the radio are saying these sort of little quotes. Sure. And, um, what I've done is, remember that program on Channel 4, Faking It? Yeah. Where they got some, like, posh kid to be on a door and all that. What I've done, <laughs> I've, um- <laughs> Imagine if that was the pitch <laughs> for the show. Dear Channel 4, you just gonna get yeah, a posh kid on a door or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah come, in, come in. Yeah, TV yeah. producer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, go on. So, what I've done, <laughs> this little book of quotes, uh, happiness quotes, I've, um, I've picked two that are real. Okay. And I've made one up, right? <laughs> and we've got a guess. And you've got a guess. Okay, then, go on. Well, I'll tell you what, Rick, why don't we, when we've heard them, we won't confer. No. We'll write down yours, yeah. A, B, or C, and I'll yeah. write down mine and we'll sure. see how okay, it works. Okay, Carl, off you go. Right, and just because I'm l I'm looking at this book, it doesn't mean I'm actually reading. No, I know, <laughs> Don't no, worry, I know. We're, we're clever. No, 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 we know, we, we, know, we can't see, yeah, Can yeah. I call my bluff? Yeah, okay. go on in. Nothing is worth more than this day. Okay. Yeah. Me? Yeah. All right. Yeah. The way I see it... <laughs> 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 Oh, oh God, my head's gonna burst. No, hang on. My head's gonna burst. No, hang, hang no, on. this might not be Carl's. Oh, it might not be. How do you know I haven't tweaked them a little bit? Yeah, good okay, point. Good enough. point, no, good point. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you gotta put with the rain. Yeah, okay. okay. Alright. Alright, yeah. Okay, no. Come on. Cat food. <laughs> <laughs> Cat food, go on. It stinks a bit. <laughs> but, if you don't put up with the smell, 
the little kitten will die. <laughs> Steve, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. What's this fake? Imagine their faces when he says that and they're going, oh my god. Oh, Carl, play a song, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll have to confer on this one. <laughs> two, two were real, one was fake. Go on in. Right. Uh, first one. Nothing is, nothing is worth more than this day. Excellent. Next one. What does that mean? Well, cherish, cherish yeah. now, cherish your yeah. time. Okay. Because you, you, uh, you can't get it back and, yeah. you know, I swear um, I saw it. Carpe diem, whatever it is, seize the day and all that. Okay. If you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. Yeah, of course. Yeah, rough with the smooth. You know, it's not all plain sailing, but, you know, rainbow's beautiful, but it comes because of the rain, which you might not like, so. Yeah. Make the most of everything and, yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> Cat food <laughs> doesn't smell good, <laughs> but. If you don't put up with it, then the little kitten will die. <laughs> right, now, Carl, that is a good effort. Now, that one's yours. I mean, obviously, right? Right. Right, no, no, but it's a good effort, right? I mean, it slipped seamlessly into the others. Yeah. I don't think it didn't. <laughs> no, but it's, it's good. I mean, we knew it, we knew it was that one, but, um, what I will say is, it's good, but what you don't know, maybe subconsciously, is, I mean, it, it, it's n very similar to, uh, the putting up with a, rain and the rainbow, but well, that's good. Why do you think that? Well. What, what does mine mean? Well, uh, even, well, even though it smells bad, it's good for something. Right, so see, I, a, I didn't look at it like that. What, what did you look at that? I, I, I kind of thought. Was yours more specifically about cat food, <laughs> <laughs> generally? Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> you know normally they like, it's an analogy. Yeah, or a metaphor for something, you know. Well, well, no, the way I, I mean, Do it. Dolly Parton, who I think did the rainbow, rain thing, she wasn't specifically concerned about weather conditions. No. It was a sort of general idea. Yeah, it was all about yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's what I've done. Go on. Okay. Well, I've used an everyday thing. Yeah. And put it with today's problems, right? Go on. So, like, um, my girlfriend, yeah, um, she might like to go shopping for clothes. I hate it. Right. But because of, because I love her, I put up with it. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah? Yeah. So, you, you love that little curtain. You can't stand the smell of the stuff you gotta feed it, but because you love it, you go, well, you know, I'll pull with this just for a few minutes and then I can, like, squeeze its head later and give it a little- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry! 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 Can we- can we go back? You know, stroke its head and stuff. Oh, right. Yeah. Sorry, it was a bit of a slip, was it? <laughs> squeeze its little head. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah! Yeah, well, that's just the thing that I do with cats. Put it in a bag and drown it in a lake. <laughs> I can feed it and then I can throw it against <laughs> yeah, the wall. Exactly. So you, yeah. didn't, you didn't see it like that, did you? No, that's very good. So it's about love, is it? It's about putting up with the bad things yeah. for, for, for something you love. Yeah. Well, that's nice. But, but, but Carl, good. you seem now to be convinced and rather smug that you've tricked us and that you've fooled us and that we didn't understand it. Well, no, well I say that's your fault, not ours. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, though. I mean, look, that man in Forrest Gump, he was a bit of a nutter. <laughs> And he, he came up with the life is a box of chocolates thing. Yeah. Now, if that was in this book, you say, oh yeah, brilliant, you know, a good bit of work. But if he was sat here doing the show with you, yeah. you'd be taking the mickey out of him. Sometimes I feel he is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, Carl, I could, I could, in fact, if people are out there, we're too lazy, could you write down everything Carl's ever said? Because I think we could publish that. Yeah. He said one today, he saw my, um, uh, salamander, it's not a euphemism, <laughs> he saw my salamander and it's just sitting there in the tank. Your exotic pet. Yeah, and he's worried about there's not being a lid on, and he said, I went, what were we worried about? He said, he said, well, he said it sits there for 24 hours a day, obviously planning to get out. <laughs> well, he's got nothing else on its mind, and it's, <laughs> the, the daft thing is, he has actually got the, like, the lid ripped up a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. it's got nothing else to think about. <laughs> and I'll be looking up there, yeah. and it's gonna get out. But what's the worst that could happen? What's Carl? it thinking? What do you think it's thinking, this salamander? It's got its eye on the DVD player. <laughs> 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 I could have Ian be down the market. Well. Oh! Oh, God! Are they dangerous? Can I just say something? Are they dangerous? I think the salamander's thinking exactly the same things as you. I mean, to look at you, you've got the same expression on your face. You know what I mean? Uh, you're dressed in green as well. He's, you've got a little round sort of Hamburglar type head, <laughs> like the salamander. Very similar. And yet you, you know, you, I think, and you bonded with it, didn't you? 
You yeah, would, but I, I probably would have tried to get out, but my little paper round bag would just hang on the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, um, can we have more nepotism on the show? I know Go that on. we uh, did that earlier with the uh, we teacher. We haven't got long, have we? We yeah. haven't. My uh, housemate, you remember I was working out with him last week to uh, head in from Big Brother's dance exercise video. That's just frightening. Yeah, we, we, we've we've kind of let that slip a little bit, I've got to be honest. But anyway, he's joined this band. They're called uh, Fujia and Miyagi. Slightly difficult to pronounce. But anyway, this is a track that I think has been getting some play by uh, Nick Luscombe and John Kennedy on XFM. They've got a gig this week at the pool on Curtain Road. Uh, that's 18th of April, Thursday. Uh, let's play it. Can I just say I've got a fridge freezer for some- Admission is free, Rick, so you'll, I imagine you'll be heading down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. Well, I've enjoyed this show. Yeah, it's been a good one. It's great. It's been great. Carl, any more? Oh, tell that story that you were telling me about your dad when he was driving. Well, it's just that you were talking about, well, I, I mentioned Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, the Forrest Gump types. When my dad was a, uh, when he was a taxi driver. Yeah. You used to have to, uh, Sort of do you, do your bit for the local area. Oh God! By taking the, uh, the yeah. forest, the forest yeah. gum yeah. people to to Blackpool. Yeah. Is that what they're called now, the forest gum people? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what the uh, the organisations that support them are? <laughs> for them to be referred to. A like. mini bus with <laughs> exactly. that, uh, life is a box of chocolates. Yeah, exactly. Dot com. Well, um, forest gum type. Uh, it yeah. must be. So you work with these people. These it was pe a, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The people with learning difficulties. Yeah, 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 and they used to get fired. Coming home must have been a busman's holiday. <laughs> 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 so he got five of them in the uh, in the cab. Yeah. And they had to go to Blackpool, and four of them were really good, you know, behaving themselves, didn't mess about, weren't fighting and stuff. But there was one who was just causing loads of trouble, and he couldn't control him. Oh, and what you've got to be able to do with people like that, you don't want them to get stressed out because it's it's not good for them. It stresses them out, and and you could end oh, up with a bit. Thanks, Doctor Carl. <laughs> you could end up with a bit of a riot on your hands. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he thought, I'll nip this one in the bud right now. And he pulled up just on the outskirts of Blackpool and um, he took the one out that was causing problems and put it in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologise. He oh, did what? Oh, God. He did it for the good of the others. He put oh. it in a wheelie bin. He was having a good time. He thought it was one of the rides. <laughs> Can you stop saying it? <laughs> Him. Yeah. He, he, you know, he was having a good time, and and he once he calmed down, my dad went back and picked <laughs> him up, and he, he was fine. He had a good. What? Day. He left him in there the whole time the others were in Blackpool. No, he left him there not not the whole day. Probably about an hour and a half. <laughs> in a wheelie bin. In a wheelie bin. Why couldn't he get out? Because like his arms were trapped on the thing. <laughs> one of those one. What he tied him up? No, do you know like when because he was a big fella. And, like, he managed to get him in so his arms were down the side like that, so he was, he was a bit trapped. Wasn't and he screaming and crying and stuff? He was making a bit of no noise, but it, do you know what I mean? What you feel, sir, so <laughs> right. <laughs> well, but anyway, that's, I didn't really want to talk about it, you just brought it up because of Forrest Gump. Did, did you, did, do his, you know, family know about this? Is this the first time he, they'd have he, heard about this? He didn't get asked to do it again. Because <laughs> because he had another he had another problem similar to it where he had a, a little minibus <laughs> and it was his job to take a load of old women to the bingo hall and yeah. it was miles away and um, he took him there there was no problem about about ten old women in a in a minibus one of them was causing trouble <laughs> 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 so he pulled over it. <laughs> no right so he took him there uh, everything's fine he dropped him off they had a lovely night yeah. right they had a lovely night won a bit of cash coming back it's a bit of a late night and they all started moaning at him going I want to be dropped off here. Take me there. I want to be dropped off first. I've got to get up early. Blah, blah. You know, my husband's expecting me. I'm already late. Take me here first. Take me there. And he just pulled up <laughs> in the middle of nowhere to get out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he made them get out and they all called for taxis. <laughs> they charged that company who was meant to be taking them home in the minibus and he got the sack. Well, it's a similar sort of story. You can't be dealing with it when people don't sort of just calm down and like solve the situation. Yeah. <laughs> They're just all like, I want to be dropped off first, take me here first, honey. Yeah, so he acts like a madman. <laughs> 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 just good. good. Uh, strokes. Someday. Now, it was a better, better choice, wouldn't it, to start off with. Um, oh, hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen. XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously. Steve Mitchell. No, come on, let's get my name right from now on. That, that novelty's worn off. What is it? Is it Steve Merchant? Oh yeah, they, yeah, that's the wrong one, isn't it, Mitchell? The Guardian got it wrong, it's Steve Merchant. And the more I say Mitchell, the more people are thinking exactly, it might be Exactly, it might be Mitchell. Oh god, sorry Dave. Um, <laughs> but Carl wanted to start off with the stereophonics. Oh, loser. Cause it was a newer track. And Carl now, we've made him what he is, he was nothing when no we found him. He was right? like work experience. And now he's going, oh, so we should start off with the stereophonics. I'm going, Trying Carl, to tell you what to do. If right? I want anyone's opinion, I don't. 
<laughs> Basically. But he'd probably come to me, I imagine, wouldn't he? <laughs> I'd be the first person. Before Carl, yeah. I'd consult you, Steve. Thank so you. just keep it, just cause he uh, was in a, was it Pilk yeah, is making mobile music? Pilk is making music. I bet you never pleased a crowd once. Good. Loads of times. Go yeah. on then, what did you play? What's the biggest gig you ever played? I did, uh, a, like a social club gig. Yeah. And, and it wasn't just about the music either. <laughs> I used to- What else could it be about? <laughs> I used to take prizes and- and cigars and stuff. <laughs> In a youth club! To give away. I just love these, like, 14 year old manks hanging out going, let's go down there, you might have some fags yeah. and cigars for us. Well it was whatever, like, was on my mum and dad's dressing table. That could have been embarrassing. Could <laughs> that could have been deeply embarrassing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. You've won. <laughs> and fair price, some handcuffs. And a black mamba. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that at any point, in your upbringing, your parents left around any kind of marital aid on the dressing table. <laughs> don't don't think I'm saying that, Carl. I'm not suggesting. Like, he doesn't like this, does no, he? Well, I, no, I can understand why. Oh yeah, because it's about it's his about his parents having sex. <laughs> <laughs> well, they must have. Yeah, at least, at least three times. I think I was an accident. <laughs> like, I still have had sex. Oh, Carl. I no, think I think it's been ongoing. Just because me me brother and sister are quite older than me. Yeah, me too. I was an accident. I know that. Yeah. Um, How old's your uh, brother and sister? Um, I think my sister's about thirty nine. Right. And my brother's about thirty seven. Okay. And you're twenty nine. Like twenty nine. Right. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, my my next one's eleven years older than me. Yeah. That was definitely a. Do you want to have a hug, you two, or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're dealing yeah. with it now. You got oh, over it. Well, would you like to see us have a hug? Oh. <laughs> oh. You oh, had a mobile rubbish. disco. Well, You're having a laugh, aren't you? I was. I every single gig I did, it's dynamite. The people loved it. It was storming. What? What, what was I, it called? I ran it from about the age of fourteen to eighteen. What was it called? Was it called in the, the name of our mobile disco? Yeah. It had two names in its lifetime. <laughs> yeah. It started its life as... Bear with it. Go on. The Rock and Roll DJs. Oh my <laughs> god. The Rock and Roll DJs, that's the <laughs> worst. I mean, that's the worst. Yeah. That's the most appalling. But then it, it became pretty bad after that. When it became the Fantasy Island Roadshow. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Because everyone up to you looked like Tattoo. Partly that, and I- because I liked the programme Fantasy Island. Why did you like the program Fantasy Island? Well, it was about love on an island. <laughs> it was, it was about a midget on an island. No, the midget was a minor character, about people going to find <laughs> love and romance. You obviously yeah. switched off once the midget had gone off and said, there's the plane. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. that then. Your yeah. parents went, that's over then. It's only five minutes long. <laughs> yeah, well it's... <laughs> and it's, what's that fantasy midget? Yeah. What happened then? Because you know, didn't they, uh, they, um, acted out their fantasies on an island? Well, people would pay to go to the island, um, yeah. to live out their own romantic fantasies, and then invariably that's but what was it always week. It was always about getting yeah, off it was a kind of love island. Yeah. Was it? Well, no, not always. It, sometimes they might be Maybe a, I didn't watch a whole one. Maybe I did just see him, like, smacking a little tattoo did. around the head. I think you just saw the trailer. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, really? But, um, so what did I sort of go? I've always wanted to have someone in- Well, no, it, it might be something like, you know, I've always wanted to, uh, to sort of, you know, live out, uh, uh, being a gunslinger in a wild west frontier town, you know. So you might kind of create that kind But what's of that got to do with- Well, he invariably would find love, or he'd sort out some emotional problem he had. It was much more a spiritual, emotional journey than so, it was well, about little midgets running around. But was it like, um, oh, I'd like to be a cowboy, and, uh, I'd like, remember the shag? <laughs> yeah, right. it was like, you will fix it. Like those letters you wrote, did you will fix it? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to meet five star, and if something happens, so be it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, but no, I have to just say once though, this on. is about my, this is my DJing credentials. I was once playing, uh, music at a scout jamboree. Yeah. When I was about 17, big 16, gig, 17. Then, big, big gig. gig. There was a thousand scouts there. Yeah. Right, yeah. They were, and I'll tell you this, we were playing on stuff, they were loving it, they were dancing, it was in a big marquee. Right. right? I slapped on Smells Like Teen Spirit. Yeah. Right? They went mad. They went mad for it, they were, they were moshing, they were climbing up the poles, the organisers were going, switch that off, switch that off, right, they're going crazy, and I was there going, no, that's what they like, I'm gonna do it. It and was like Footloose. It was unbelievable, it was just like Footloose. Then I came in with Rage Against the Machine, Killing in the Name of, the place you went wild. Yeah. And they were trying to get me off the decks, it was like Bill, it was like Bill Grundy interviewing the Sex Pistols. And then when, when the, the head of the had you killed. <laughs> exactly. Like, there was some sort of mafia thing, it was all hushed up, that the scouts went there one night with all candles and they said by a grave and that, and that was the end of the film. <laughs> exactly. It was a film, I assume. <laughs> you no, know, this genuinely happened. I assume this didn't really happen. Yes, you it did. I swear to God, I was playing Smells Like Teen Spirit and it went wild and they were, the organisers were going, switch that off, they're going crazy and I was going, no, it's what they want. Can I say something? It was brilliant. That to me, I've, I've known you for about, f um, four years, yeah. and I've heard all those things. That must be the highlight of your life. Unbelievably so, yeah. It's, you've never had anything that good no. or exciting since, have you? One day I hope to sleep with a lady, and hopefully <laughs> that'll, uh, it'll slide into second place. <laughs> 
Rock the Casbah. I love the fact you had at least three minutes to get that right. I know. To prepare and get that right. I know, but my mouth was full of, uh, Maryland cookies. Mm. Yeah. You know, last week, mm. th this would, oh, this would blow your mind. He came in, do you know what he bought for himself, at uh, about ten, penguins. Mm. Who buys penguins still? No. Or wagon wheels. Oh, I've never liked wagon wheels. <laughs> you not being a fan? No, no, but I'm oh, sorry about that. It's The Clash and Rock the Casbah. Mm -hmm. Um, talking about records, have I told you that time my brother-in-law, um, uh, he was moving out of his place, and I think he was moving in with my sister, and I was about like, um, I don't know, 13, um, and so he was about, uh, 30, and I moved in, and, uh, he brought round all, um, uh, his records when he was storage to, to leave them at our house, right? Mm. And he had all these old sort of records, 50s and 60s records, and, I was right. and uh, um, and, uh, they, uh, put them upstairs. And I was looking through them, and, uh, it's just all like Alvis stuff and Beatles stuff. And there was a mate of mine who loved Alvis, okay? Right. And he had, um, well, well, loads of chemicals, <laughs> yeah. He had loads of chemicals, and I was into chemistry. And, uh, he said, I swap me some chemicals for them. So I sort of nicked about five Alvis singles, and I got all these chemicals. And then, just oh. guilt. What sort of chemicals? Just things like, you know, um, uh, just things like from a chemistry set, just, you know, crystals and metals and magnets, all that sort of stuff that I just like to muck around with. And, um, and, uh, and then the guilt just hit me. I just thought, well, he's gonna notice that. And I just, I, one night, I just came downstairs and I confessed to my mum. And she went, all right, well, I won't tell him but you've got to be good. And it's sort of like I was just really, really good for a year. <laughs> and then, and then I was, have I told you this? And no, no, I, no, no, you haven't, you've just reminded me of something. And then I remember, um, when I was about 18, uh, my brother was talking about it, and he said, did you ever, um, uh, play those records I left for you? <laughs> Brilliant. He told my mum, he said, these are for Ricky. She just didn't tell she me. She was sharp, wasn't she? <laughs> she, she, you, opportunism there. Oh, that's genius. And, uh, that was it. That's, that's but, why I was good. But you've <laughs> never, you've never stolen anything since, have you? No, I don't, I don't, I don't. Except know. that spate of, uh, of shoplifting after that <laughs> to teach your mum a lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I went round, uh, and, uh, arson. Mm. Uh, no, no, I did, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I just, oh, That's it was terrible. I, I remember, um, I, I think all kids go through a phase of shoplifting. Well. Um, and I, I, when I was going through it, mm. um, I used to just, just little things, just like magic markers and, uh, Magazines, Mars bars, that sort of thing. Yeah. And, Cigars uh, and dildos. And one day, right? Same thing. Uh, me, me mate, Anthony, his mum called up my mum and said, I've got to, uh, I've got to meet up with you. I've got to have a word with you. And, uh, she said, what about? She said, I don't want to talk about it over the phone. So she goes, oh, right. Well, yeah, come round tonight then. So anyway, my mum sees me. She, she don't want to be in an awkward position and, like, be a bit embarrassed and what have you. So she sees me and she goes, right. Anthony's mum's coming round. What have you been doing? Yeah. So I go, oh God. I said, I've, I've been nicking stuff. So she goes, like, what? So not, not big stuff. I've, I've had a few calculators and uh, Mars bars and stuff. How many? I just work it out. Hold on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Works out at 7.2 <laughs> per day. So, um. How so many calculators do you need? So, <laughs> so it was when that phase. You failed maths, didn't you? <laughs> everyone wanted a calculator. It was like a trendy thing, wasn't it, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. In Manchester a couple of years ago, yeah. So, um. <laughs> so anyway, so I told her all this and I confessed to Computers like, will make it there, won't they? <laughs> I confess to his magic in the back <laughs> yeah. of battery. <laughs> Go on. Confess to nicking all this stuff. She comes round. She only wanted to borrow some money. <laughs> Brilliant. She said, really oh, I, I don't like asking. I was a bit embarrassed to ask you over the phone, but can I borrow twenty quid? Oh, that's fantastic. And there's me. <laughs> that's great. I did some oh. sort of thing to yours. And did you? And he went, hold on, I'm going to work out the interest on that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll bank it ten percent. She'll owe you four yeah. pounds forty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and did you, so, so your mum was a loan shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and, what, and uh, did, 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 uh, did she mention you that went, you didn't I just, I just stuff with your, with that other, because yeah, what I'm saying is presumably you got no, your no, mate no, in trouble. No, 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 no. Right, no. She went, no worries, I'll just go and get my purse, it's on the dressing table. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Carl! <laughs> Do you want a cigar? <laughs> <laughs> what other things you used to give away at your disco then that you'd find on the dressing table? You used to go into your parents' room and go, what can I give away it was, tonight? It was stuff like a, cigars. Yeah. I'd like cigars. Yeah. Uh, I had a pair of tights. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, no, you know, you get them in like a long... <laughs> Who did you give that to? Just whoever did the prize. It was stuff like, you know, we, we did like a little raffle. <laughs> just imagine Carl going there just for a pair Who's of... Who's going joyriding this week? Pretty Polly, sheer. Exactly. Who's <laughs> yeah, doing a bank job this exactly, week? Exactly, that's what it was used for, yeah. Just little bits of, you know, unopened makeup, just stuff like that. 
And did right. their parents not notice? Well, no, nah, because it's stuff that you're not that bothered about. And if a telly went missing, they'd notice it. <laughs> they would, wouldn't they? They'd be staring at a wall for three days. <laughs> but a pair of tights and a cigar and that. Yeah. Got away with it. Yeah. But it's it's funny as well because like you had you had two names. I just like remembered. I started <laughs> off as um, <laughs> Dazzling Darren's Disco, just because the first lights I could afford belonged to someone who had their name put in lights. Right. So I went along with that <laughs> name to for pretend a you were called Darren. That's lovely. <laughs> That's crazy. Is it worth it? <laughs> Brilliant. And then it went on to Pilkins making music. Yeah. 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 That's great. Anyway, should we have some more music? Yeah, yeah we we've gone. been waiting for what, what are you going to play, Carl? We've got the Cooper Temple Claws. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> yes, Steve Merchant Steve here. Merchant. Steve Merchant. Yeah, okay, they're, they're good to keep saying it. <laughs> and, Carl. Uh, Carl, obviously, yeah. Now, stop, we've stop been fiddling, uh, Carl. We've been digging yeah, around in Carl's office, haven't we? As ever, Rick. Um, He's a little bit nervous about this. Well, but he doesn't need to be. I don't think he is. You just need to trust us, Carl. Just trust us. Trust us with the music. Trust us with the pe speech output. <laughs> trust us. <laughs> <with> yeah. The... <laughs> That's easy for me to yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious, Rick, that sometimes perhaps we're a little ill-prepared on sure. the show, and I just wanted to make sure that we were sort of keeping ourselves abreast of developments, changes at the station, <laughs> policy. You said abreast. Thanks. Uh, you know, policies particularly, and yeah. um, I was lucky enough just to stumble across this, and I feel that actually a couple of weeks back we were a little ill-prepared, because we yeah. hadn't read this. Yeah. This is the XFM uh, information, it's the guidelines, if you will, sure. on how to react to deaths, disasters, and other news emergencies. Yeah, and there's, there's very important ones, like important a, a royal problems. death, there's like, you know... Well, there's certain criteria. I mean, obviously, uh, the general guidelines state that occasionally something will happen in the world that prompts XFM to break away from the normal programming and react to our audience's feelings of shock or grief. Mm. Uh, as broadcasters, we have a Duty, do you think They're not talking about, about our show there, are they? They're yeah. talking about something happening. No, all, all shows. I, I mean, no, no, like people being caused grief, just Carl's on the air. Right. You mean like, you know. I mean, a bigger event. A royal yeah. dying. Or a royal yeah. dying or a, some kind of, um, you know, major disaster. Sure. Um, we should be able to tailor our output to show that we feel the same way as the audience in yeah. these times of trouble. Oh, definitely. Uh, that would never involve the station shutting down completely, Rick. No. I want to reassure you of that yeah. now. And it would never involve playing classical music or stopping all speech content. Sure. Because okay. a lot, because that, that, they put that in there because a lot of stations, that's exactly what they do. Exactly. But um, uh, oh, XFM have deemed it uh, th th that we don't have to go completely down the line. There, we have well, to do it let our explain own why. Go People on. need company at times like this. Yeah. And should be able to look to us for both factual information and emotional reaction. Sure. Uh, we simply have to change our tone and our playlist to show that we're all feeling the same thing. Right. Be it. Oh my God! I can't believe this is happening. Or, well, it's pretty sad, but she was 101 after all. And that's actually in that. That's document, what it isn't actually it? says in the general <laughs> guidelines. <laughs> that's as they are stated. Um, uh, if you should hear about the death of a major royal, yeah, this is information that you're actually reading this, by the way. Yeah, I'm you? reading this. Yeah. Out. What you should do is say nothing about this on air, on air under any circumstances. Drop all the ads and promos from your schedule. And if Chris Smith, the news guy, is in the building, get him in the studio immediately. Yeah. That's what it says, Carl. Yeah. If Smitty is a, I don't care where he is, I don't care if he's on holiday. Let's phone him up now and tell him someone's died. To see how he would react. Get, get, get him down here. Get him down <laughs> See how long yeah. it takes him to get down here. Where, does, the, where does Smitty live? Because I know where he lives. He lives in a cave and he slides <laughs> down a pole. <laughs> yeah. And he gets into a car. His butler <laughs> uh, uh, is, is up there and he, and he sorts well, things out. I, th I suppose the approach there is that only Chris can deliver this tragic news. Yeah. If, yeah. if it was your eye. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have the same. Uh, I remember, do you remember the XFM, uh, as it first started, it launched the day after after, um, uh, Princess Diana died. I know, I know. And, yeah. and, I, and I'd never done radio before, I was nervous enough, mm. and it was launched, and it was, oh, how- Because I, I, was it, was it the first night, because what I've forgotten, actually, until you mentioned that then, is of course you used to host your own phone-in oh, show. God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I like And I gave that up after a week because it was just too stressful. I have never seen a man so petrified. I know. He spent all his time preventing people getting through on the phone lines. Yeah. He just wouldn't let people come on air. And, 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 and for the f for when I had to go on air, right? Um, my mates sort of like came over the first day and they were mucking around and uh, I was having a drink with them where I was to work and I was going, I've got to go on air in a minute and I was like <laughs> drinking shandy or something because I was saying I didn't want to be drunk or anything. And uh, I kept saying, don't swear. <laughs> Telling my mates not to swear, they look at me like I was mental. I was going, don't swear, because I'll swear. I was terrified of two things. Um, just swearing uh, and, and, uh, and operating the desk. I thought, I'm gonna, even if I get through operating the desk, I'm gonna swear. And it just, uh, oh, it was, it was awful. Didn't you, um, didn't you spill coffee over the machine and then go, oh shit? 
on your first link. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. But no. I know it wasn't a triumph. No, I started off with a, I was really like the music, and I started off with a classical piece by, <laughs> um, a bloke called Kuntz, <laughs> who's a, uh, a German composer. Brilliant. So I, kn I, I knew it was, it was okay. You're then. off. Yeah. You're I was off. off, yeah. Um, but, uh, and so how did it go then? Because I remember <laughs> it was appalling. Good <laughs> call! He's a composer! Look it up. Yeah, I know he is. Right, uh, 08700 800 1234. Yeah. If you know what yeah, the composer yeah, I'm talking yeah. about. What? Yeah, we've what? done it, we've done it now. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out, Carl. Come on. No, you know it's... what people are like? What? They take things badly, don't they? <laughs> like who? Like what? You, you just, it's like a, <laughs> a, a, a bull to a red rag, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, but the thing is that we say bad words and we get in trouble, but I was listening to Heart, um, uh, the other day, and they played Luther Vandross, and, uh, th that, that song, uh, n n uh, what was it, um, Never Too Much, Never Too Much, play a bit, the lyric in this is disgusting. It's just depraved. filthy, what a fil- What I mean, is he doing? Just saying like that, imagine that, he's got a young girl's picture, and he's going, oh, thanks for that, and he phones up and goes, what did he say? You know that picture you gave me? She goes, yeah, he goes, well. <laughs> I looked at it just to get me started. <laughs> that poor young woman. That's I imagine more that, like, she's sleeping, <laughs> and he just sneaks in and just, he's got a Polaroid camera, she wakes up, he goes, what are you doing? She goes, well, what are you up to? He goes, no, I'm just taking a picture. <laughs> well, why? I'm gonna, we're, uh, we're we're tomorrow, are we? Yeah, you're, you're well, going on holiday tomorrow, aren't you? Yeah, well, I need, I need I'm that. I'm just telling to get me started. <laughs> what do you mean, get you started? Yeah, you know, in the morning. <laughs> and then that's on heart. Mm. All right. Six point two. So don't come on air and tell us what we, we can and say, say. We can't say. We can't say classical composers' <laughs> names or philosophers like Kant. Exactly. So don't tell don't us that, Carl. All right. Just play a record. What you got, Steve? Some ride, Steve. Yeah, I just think it's time that we listen to some ride. Rick. We haven't listened to. Them, I don't know about you and I, but I, I haven't listened to, them, to any for a, a, about six, seven weeks. Yeah. Just thought it'd be good to have them on the air again. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's a tragedy they split up. <laughs> this is uh, the classic Chelsea girl play. It. Uh. Sure, there's lots of bands at it that time. Yeah, so the old Britpop thing and the, the wall of sound. Mm. And mm. They weren't. Were they shoegazers? Do you think they were? Weren't they? Well, that's I mean, what they thought because there was a lot of noodly yeah. guitar, but yeah. uh, good melodies as well. I reckon that's always important. Uh, it is to me. <laughs> I don't know about uh, you, Carl, but it is important to us. Yeah. We've just had uh, a couple of um, people, Sarah and Claire, call up and wish us luck for the BAFTAs, but for mm. some reason, they want one of us to do an impression of Leslie Phillips. Can't do it. I can't. I, 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 he I doesn't mean, he say ding dong. And uh, hello, and all that. That's not bad. But, That's but nice. I, want, I want Carl to do it, though. Yeah, go on, Carl. Go on. Hello. <laughs> well done. Say ding dong. <laughs> ding dong. Nice. <No. laughs> yeah. Do we do any other impressions? Um. No. <laughs> I can't Go. think of any. Hello. Do that. Hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you look like a ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> oh, God. Do, uh, You're... my name is Bond, James Bond, as, uh, as though it were Sean Connery. My name's Connery. Bond. James Bond. Do that. Go on. My name's Bond. No, do it as though you were in doing an impression. Sean. I'm, what, so I'm trying to be Scottish? Well, yeah. Well, yeah, sort of. Perhaps a bit more specific than that. Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Bond. <laughs> no. Keep going. <laughs> My name's Barn, James Barn. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy Stewart. It's not like this. Is, this is the best fun. It's like yeah. having your very own Fisher Price toy for yeah, two exactly. hours a week. Exactly. It's great. Um, do um uh, uh Roger Moore do that? So. Roger Moore. <laughs> <laughs> Phyllis Pierce, Percy Sugden. I'm I'm licensed to kill. <laughs> that, that, anyway, she just said. No, this is a great no, game. No, no, yeah. Any, we'll we'll come it, back to this another time. Yeah, maybe. anything <laughs> anything you want Carl to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Carl's homework today was come up with those, you know those, um, lateral thinking things? Go on. Those stupid- Oh, I hate they're them. ridiculous, aren't they? Like they? Um, a man went into a field and died, and you're meant to ask questions like, oh, was it- and it turns out, his parachute didn't open. So it's basically, it's not logic, it's what am I thinking? Yeah. Well, there's that one where there's a man in- this is the worst I've ever heard. Yeah. A man is found dead lying in a phone box. Yeah. Right, his wrists are cut. Mm. He's bled to death, and there's glass everywhere. Yeah. Right, and the phone's hanging off the hook. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What happened to him? I know this. Yeah. Right. Do you know what the answer is, Carl? It's ridiculous. He was a fisherman. Yeah. He was on the phone. Someone asked him how big his fish was. He did that gesture like fishermen always do to say it was much bigger than it actually. Put his arms out. His arms went through the glass, and he slashed his wrists, why and he died. Why did you do that with someone on the phone when they can't see how how big you're actually saying? Well, that's one of the many problems with that, uh, yeah. that conundrum. 
Yeah, not the point we were making, but again, good. You <laughs> I mean you're there? You, that is good thinking. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so what? You had to come up with some of these. I didn't know this was his challenge. Yeah. Have you come up with one? I came up with three, and they're all belters. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna? Oh, is it? <laughs> oh wow! Well, if it's as good coming. as your quote about happiness that we had to guess which was yours and which was the real ones, like faking it, I cannot wait. I'm looking forward to this. I mean, I literally can't wait. Should we do it now? Well, I'm tempted to save it because I just want to mention to people um, that uh, they should be very excited because uh, it's going to be Carl's special night tomorrow. Are you excited, Carl? Oh yeah. Oh, this is yeah. Um, it, uh, me and Steve, because we were nominated, we get a guest for the Battle uh, Awards, um, and it's uh, it doesn't say guest. It actually says um, you know uh, partner. So I'm taking um, my partner, and uh, Steve's taking Carl. Yeah. But what Carl doesn't realise is. You will have to pretend you're his partner, otherwise you yeah. won't be able to get in. Yeah, we'll have to hold hands when we Is this really your partner? It's not just a guest. They have That's to how it is, and either we go in like that or we can't get in. You have to, you just have to be with him when you go up there. I mean, you have to, uh, does yeah, he have to hold You should, we should hold hands, but I think what we should do is just to make sure that there's nothing at all that, like, is gonna go wrong, we should just do a little kiss. Just like, just and I'll, I'll be cameras. seen sort of like cheek to cheek, just to show them that, yeah. you know, you're not, he's, he's like not Elton just getting, John and he's not just getting his mates in for a free meal, you are actually partners. No, I'm not, I'm not for that. Why not? Well, because we know we're not actually gay. No, but, but, yeah, but so you, it's not a problem. you've come out of it looking quite good because you've got a good looking fella. <laughs> but I'm, I'm meant to look like, you know, I mean, I'm not gay, but if I was, I don't think I'd go for your thing. Oh, he's done you, Steve! It's turned on you again! I cannot believe! We were trying to get in! Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. I have got the cream of London's totty <laughs> phoning me up trying to get an invite to the BAFTAs, yeah. right? We have very graciously asked you if you'd like to come along. Well, that yeah. worries me even more. That you've got women calling you up. <laughs> <laughs> Carl. Carl, I can't choose between them. If I let one of them down, I'm gonna- they're gonna destroy yeah. them. Is they, yeah. they'll, they'll be- they'll be ruined, their yeah. lives will be ruined. It's better for me to take you and not, you know, ruin the lives of any of those poor when, women. When- when he told them he was taking yeah. you, it was like a scene from Graceland. There was just like- There women, was weeping. They were crying. Like it was horrible. Hundreds of them, and really? he just went. And I got he, upset. He just had to say, "Look, just chill out, bitches," didn't you? I did. I just said, "You know, you're all my hoes, but yeah. I can't choose between you." So I'm taking Carl. So I'm taking Carl. You know, he gets. He could get you a discount frocks. No, I had a letter from the people that there's a. No, he's good. No, listen, Carl. There's an organisation that sponsors the BAFTA Awards yeah. in terms of clothes and fashion. They sent me a letter. They said your partner. They've not specified the sex. They've said your partner can come along and choose yeah. an outfit. Now I suspect. By the look of it, it is a woman's outfitters. I'm thinking we could get you a lovely trouser suit. Well, it may look suit, feminine, right? But I think people will be fooled. It'd just, be, it just be a little bit roomy in the hip and that probably now on the shoulders. But you're a bit skinny. Why don't you take it? Because it's a lot of an insult. And maybe just some pearls as well. <laughs> be lovely. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't well, you? Uh, I haven't got anything sorted to wear yet. See, you're slagging me off. You're likely to be end up going in a tracksuit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going out today. I've, I've never bought a suit since I was like 11. Right. <laughs> I, went, I, went, I went to my brother's wedding. That's last time I wore a suit. Right. Really? Um, and you, won't, you can't get anywhere near it now, can you? Can't, can't get into that. No. Anymore. No. Um, that was a good day. What was it? What sort of suit was it? It was, uh, like a, a, a sort of a grey silver one. Classy. Excellent. Quite flary. Nice. Um, well try and go with something grey silver one. I just think that with your little round head, what did you, what did that look like? That looks all right. <laughs> like he'd landed from the- <laughs> yeah, he just yeah, landed just, on it. like, who's yeah. the most- <laughs> They walk among man. us. I didn't, I didn't really need to wear a suit either, cause I didn't- I hardly went into the church, it was in the car park, right? And it's when my brother was in the army, mm. and he had a Ford Capri with one of them horns that goes, do 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 And you just sat there. Why didn't- why didn't he come in his tank? I just- I just sat in that, doing that all day, and the vicar was getting well annoyed with me. What, when the service was on? Yeah. It was Brilliant. driving everyone well, up the do you, Were you just allowed to do what you wanted when you were growing up? Like Nelson Munts from The Simpsons, you, you just- were you just allowed- d didn't matter- there, was there any discipline? You didn't have teachers, you didn't- did, did no one just- yeah, why didn't I, someone I, come I, out and- I did, I got a couple of good idings off me dad a couple of times. What for? Just being mopey most of the time. If- if I had a strop on, he'd hate that. He could go out and burn some down or nick something, but don't- mm. Wander around with your head no, down. Well. Didn't he smack you for not liking a castle once? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> what's that? What that? <laughs> Went to uh, Carnarvon the yeah. other day, and I was bored. I was at that age when I just wanted to go in an arcade, and my dad was saying, "Come and see the castle. You know, there's history here." And I still don't like castles. It's one of them things that, again, just too far back to sort of even 
think about people living in them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I was just like, look, it's a wreck, you know, knock it down, flatten the thing. Sure. <laughs> And I was being really that, ropey. Isn't that great? <laughs> and it's weird, cos now, like, my mum and dad have retired and gone to Wales. Yeah. And now and again he texts me there, and every time we get to the point where he gave me a clout, he goes, you're getting flashbacks, son. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a sobering lesson for you. Yeah. You're not on the British Heritage Committee anymore, are you? <laughs> no. This is the National Trust land tarmac it. <laughs> the biggest car park in Britain, for Christ's sake. So, um, so look, you're looking forward to the awards, are you, tomorrow? Um, you better say yes, cos otherwise. N uh, no, it'll be, it'll be alright. I mean, I've, I've told a couple of people and they got like, God, you're dead lucky. Yeah. You know, in a way. Oh, they're dead lucky. It's like, it's Santa's coming, isn't it? It's, uh, other way people talk to Carl, you're a lucky boy, aren't you? Yeah. Going to the BAFTAs with Steve? <laughs> it's just a, a posh raffle at the end of the day, though, isn't it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it sense. It's, you know, there's yeah. gonna be some... They give away some tights and stuff. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's Chris Tower goes, I found, I went to my parents' house, I found <laughs> yeah. these just lying around. Oh, but winners and losers, and, um, yeah. Yeah, but and what food. Well, quite, what? yeah, but the, what, what is exciting, surely, is the razzmatazz and the, uh, brushing shoulders with the rich and famous. Mm, I'm, I'm not into that. You're not? No. I don't feel you're gonna appreciate this, like we thought it's you It's weird, would. cos Suzanne said to me this morning, who would, you know, who would you like to meet there? Yeah. Is there anyone who, like, you know you can get close to and it's like, God, you know, I really admire your, you know, big fan of yours, whatever. And it's me and Steve, so you're here now. Well, you know. I yeah. really admire your big fanny. I didn't- <laughs> <laughs> What did you say? What did you say? You, but, you know, uh, if you're a big fan of it. Oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> th there isn't anyone, really. Do you know what I mean? I isn't like, there? you know, you two are all right. Um, Thanks. Jonathan Ross, is he going? He might do, I don't know. Hang on, wait a minute. I can't help but feel we could have exploited this more. We could have maybe run a, a competition to let someone win. You yeah. know, if, you, if you're not going to appreciate it, can't Yeah. Are you going to get a trouser suit? Are you going to get a lady's trouser suit? I just think then, if you go sort of like looking macho and walking down with him, you know, they know that you're not really partners. And I just think it's a slap in the face for BAFTA. <laughs> That's true enough. No, it doesn't matter what you wear though, Elton. Can't Jones. you mint a little bit? Can't you at least sort of walk a little bit mincy? Because you've got such a macho what sort of mank walk. Elton John's fella doesn't look gay and the stuff he wears and that, does he? Do you know what I mean? It means nothing. No, but that's because Elton's doing the work for him. No, but- By dressing as like some kind of restoration dame. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the fact he dresses as Anne Widdicombe <laughs> for special <laughs> occasions. That's yeah. his hair done like her. Uh, that, that's great. Anyway, music. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I, I, um, this is a very underrated album. It's Richard Ashcroft's um, Alone With Everybody. And I know it got a bit of a slag and it didn't sell as well as it was because people were going, oh, it's no urban hymns. And it, and it, it, and it maybe it's not, but um, he got criticised for being pop, but this is a great tune on here. Um, you are my mind in my sleep. And I, 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 I think it's, it's really good. And only two more shows. That's true enough. And we're away for yep. three months. Oh, 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 I'm Ricky Gervais. Obviously, yeah. Steve Merchant, little Carl. Now, Carl, what? his homework was to come up with those stupid lateral thinking problems. Uh, we might, we maybe should give an, a, an example of the. Uh, oh, um, Romeo and Juliet. Right, Romeo's asleep on the bed. Juliet's on the floor, covered in water and broken glass. What happened? And you ask all these stupid questions, and it's. Romeo's a cat and Juliet's a goldfish. Again, Awful. What am I thinking? Yeah. Yeah, come on then, Carl. Right, um, first one. Yeah. There's a bloke lying on the floor, right? He's cut his head, blood's coming out of his head, and all his mates come running up, and they're all stood round him. Yeah. And, uh, they don't take their hats off to, as a mark of respect. That why, is outrageous. Why didn't they take their hats off? <laughs> Oh, I'm uh, laughing, but it's probably as good as the oh, real absolutely. ones. Oh, absolutely. No, but uh, these are really good. Did you make them all up? Yeah. No, no, I mean, did you make up all the ones that already exist? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that would make a lot of sense. Right, a bloke's fallen with his... Yeah. He's lying on the floor. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah. His mates come running is, up is, and like, oh. wasn't it impo Was it important that his head was cut? Um... <laughs> I don't know. I mean, would, it, would, it, would it be okay if he'd have been wearing a hat? He wouldn't have been dead if he was wearing a hat. Well, what's your answer? No, you meant to answer a question. You don't just go, what's your answer? You say, where's the turn? So you go, no, and I have to guess. It's obviously like sort of a motorcycle stunt team or a parachute. Why, why didn't they take their hats off? Because they're probably still on the motorbikes or something, or... Well, yeah, but if you mark, mark a respect to someone, you could take your helmet off. <laughs> Angry. What are they parachutists? <laughs> why, can they, why can't they take their helmets off? Because they're still they're coming down from the sky. Still... But he's on the floor dead. Well, yeah, they, they can look down and see him on the floor. Are they on the floor, Carl? They're on the floor. They're well. walking, are they? Yeah. Well, they sort of stood there looking at him. They're stood there. Yeah. They're stood on the floor looking. They're at him. soldiers. 
Why? But why? If because it might be in a battle zone. They might have their zone. helmets on, and he's, he's been no. shot in the head. No. The, well, that does work. <laughs> you see, this is my point. That one works. That one works. Unless you've given us a piece of information where that doesn't work, what yeah. what what's the difference? Why is why is yours different to he's been shot in the head in the trenches and they're looking at him and they keep their helmets on? I just don't don't think it matters as much. If they're in the trench, they're already <laughs> guarded a little bit, so th they could take their hats off. It's the best mate for God's sake. <laughs> He's dwelling on this. Are they normal hats? What kind of hats are they? No! Don't get ratty! What kind of hats are they? Baseball hats? If I told you what sort of hats they are, you'd have the answer. Oh! Okay, I've got to guess what sort of a hat it is then, have I? Right. Uh, um, is it a trilby? No. Is it a bowler? I know what it is. What? They're spacemen. No. Oh, that's a good that one. That one works as well. That's, yeah. This is my point. I like that one a lot. It works. He's fallen on the moon, and there are oh, not that the moon happened, it was yeah, that yeah, wasn't it in the studio, you know. we know that, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Carl, what's your answer? Builders on a building site. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that different to soldiers? <laughs> because bricks don't fall in wars. <laughs> <laughs> but bullets fly! <laughs> right, next one. No, let's play a record and we'll come back to it, Carl, oh. while you think about what you've done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you've been embarrassed Let's play some classic suede. Yeah, and this is for David and Kieran, I think, who wanted a <laughs> bit of, bit of butler at his best. Come on, crack oh, it on. I hate you, butler. <laughs> Coming next, your next lateral problem number two. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Suede there. Indeed. I think their second or third single. Brilliant. All the way back. Ten years ago. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Metal Mickey. Mm -hmm. On XFM 104.9. Was it ten years right. ago? Must have been, wasn't it? Wow. I think, was Drowners 91? I think so. Drums. Yeah. Go on. Right. Go on then, Carl. Second one then. This is a bit easier, but I still think it's a good one. So this is, uh, we should explain what this is if it's you're just a, tuned in. Uh, it's, uh, one of those stupid lateral thinking problems. That Carl himself has created. Yeah. That was yeah. his homework. Right, this go. one. Um, it's a fella. He he has a normal day doing doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with him. Right. <laughs> and it's the twist in the towers. It's just like towers the unexpected. Yeah. Just a normal day. Nothing wrong with him. Hold on, though. He's got the legs of a fish. <laughs> <laughs> go on. So that's uh, why he's been hiding his legs. So go on. He, he does his normal the legs of a fish. That's <laughs> how <laughs> he can't carry on. He has his work his working day and that, yeah. and then he gets a bit tired. Oh. Mm. Um, goes to bed, he puts the light on, mm. leaves it on, goes to bed. Oh. That's crazy. That's mental. I, I can't think what's happened. Anyway, here's Radiohead. <laughs> uh, right, okay. What, the question is why does he put the light on when so he's So a man, he's, he's had a normal day, he's coming from work. Is that right, he's coming from work or he's not been working? Yeah, he's just been no, he's, he's been working and stuff, I think. <laughs> you think? You've made it up, Carl, you can decide. Um, so, is the, yeah. qu the question is why does he put the light on when he's asleep? There's a reason that he's put the light on when he's asleep. Has he gone to sleep? No, no, Carl, don't shrug. You're meant to answer these questions. He, he put the light on before he went to bed. Yeah, and the, and the question and you're asking me is sleep. why? What's and the he, scenario? And the light's on and, and yeah. that, but he's gone to sleep. Yeah. He started reading and then he fell asleep. Um, no. Did he intent- so he intentionally, for some reason, put the light on? Every night. It's mad. Sounds mad. <laughs> it's that, that's Carl, doesn't it? Every night he does it. Yeah. He puts the light on when so he Carl, Carl, is the point of this, th 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 he puts the light on for a very good reason. Th not for us, but for some people. He's blind and it's always been on and he thinks he's turning it off, but it was on in the day and he thinks he's turning it off, but he's turning it on because no, he's blind. No, that'd be stupid. That works. No, that works great, Rick. Yeah. Thank you, Carl. So um, you've got to come up with- minute, Hang on. If what? you're blind, why would you put a light on? No, he thinks he's off. Yeah. But why would he turn it on anyway? To think so he doesn't get burgled so people know he's in because he can't see him. So he just like, he puts the light on when he's there and then he turns the light off when he goes to bed. So people think it's fine. But he's, he's got it out of kilter. And actually he's, he's, he's walking around in the dark all day. I don't believe that if you're blind you turn your light on. I don't on. think you'd be living on your own, would you? I'm not having that for a second. Do blind people live on their own? Second. <laughs> oh, some people do. Lonely blind people live on their own. No, if you if you like if you got bad eyes. But any even women? Any um, are there any blind women who are living on their own? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean if you know of some blind women. Oh wait, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. We've gone through this. If, if you, you are a blind, blind woman, woman with 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 no standards and you don't care annoying voices and smell, yeah, then get in touch with you. <laughs> yeah, Do I you mean you've got to be within the ages of say twenty five to. 65, you know, <laughs> right. well, call it 75, if I see it, you, if I see <laughs> all of a sudden. Yeah, go on. If you were blind, would you live in London? 
<laughs> because I, uh, someone said yesterday there was one struggling outside in Leicester Square, and I don't understand. If you were, bl I mean, you but know, that if you've been a tourist, but why come to London if you if you're blind? It's the worst place in the world to come if you're blind. To hear the sights. <laughs> <laughs> to hear the sights. It's a bit mad, isn't it? They're, well, they have they the same. They, they do the same. They have tourist them. needs like anyone else. Yeah. No, but it, it sort of stinks, and you'd go away going, "Oh, it's not that good." I just thought, I, I, I thought, I thought it was a bit weird. Well, never mind your concern for the, the partially sighted or uh, part, you know, sight impaired people coming to London. Get on with this. Yeah. Um, so, th yeah, so there he is. Yeah. It's like, oh, a bit tired. Yeah. Put, just put the light on. Uh, get to bed. <laughs> yeah, so he turns the light on and he goes to bed. Yeah. Oh. Should we, it? should we, um, as we, should we play a track? He's not, it is not, he's not sleeping on the job, he's a lighthouse keeper. Well done. Is he a lighthouse that, that's keeper? That's not it, Carl. He's a lighthouse keeper. Right, why wasn't the light on all the time? It's, it's light in the day. You idiot. Play a record. What? Play a record. You're a buffoon. No, actually, the, light's, the light isn't on in the day, is it? No, no it's not.